Hey there team, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane and in today's video I would like to share some software with you basically. So Reillusion have recently, the beginning of this month, released some in progress videos of the new software they're working on and the first one we're going to look at is iClone 8 which is about animating really, it's about simplifying animation and making it accessible to everyone. And I've been aware of this software for a while. It's not something I've ever really used, but these videos have got me pretty excited and I really need to get my hands on it now. But I thought I would share the video with you in the same way that I did when Unreal Engine 5 was announced because I think it's potentially as industry shifting as something like that. So let's take a look at this. And uh, I think what I'll probably do as well, if you stick around till the end, I think we'll do a giveaway of some software too. So uh, hang around to learn more about that. And for now, let's see what iClone 8 has to offer. I'll click on play. Oh, yeah, there you go, iClone 8, we're changing version. So you can see straight away the video shows us that it's, it's about animation. You can see how they're blending it together. Uh, and yeah, the focus is definitely character animation. So, um, play to animate. So we can select a player. Cool and we can set waypoints. Oh, that's pretty cool. So one of the ways that you can move a character around is to put waypoints down and then you can slow them down. Cool, so you've got like modifiers as well that you can use to speed up, slow down. And uh, yeah, when you change direction, there's it puts animations in, like it changes the, the walk, it swings the arms, it blends really well. Uh, you can also assign buttons to particular motions that you want, which is cool. So he looked a little bit out of breath there at the end. Uh, and we can also use the WASD convention as well. So that's good. So, you know, maybe if you don't have a controller to hand, um, then you can use WASD. In fact, did we? Yeah, I completely overlooked the fact that they're controlling this character with um, a controller, a game controller. So if you can play a game, you can animate and it will just record the motion that you're putting in there and then obviously you can do the same with WASD and also the mouse which again you know if you've animated the traditional way you'll know how much time something like this can save because traditional animation where traditional 3d animation with lots of keyframes is hard work so we can also use this runtime camera switch so this is just happening live and they're switching the camera to create this uh, more cinematic look which again, you know, if we're talking about the principles of animation and staging, changing your camera angles makes such a huge difference to your work. In this case, they are now moving an NPC and it looks like they're creating a path for this guy. And they're editing it just like a standard curve. And uh, <laughs> they've got multiple NPCs on this loop, which again is pretty good. So this is character follow. So they've got a character there and... I assume, yes, yeah, so they set it up so that other characters are going to follow them. I think two of those characters have got the same face as well, which is pretty disconcerting. So this is just about follow distance. So they're still doing the follow here. And they uh, they can set how far back the character goes, I guess. Which, you know, if you were doing like a, um, like a sneaky stealth sequence where someone's following another character, that would be perfect for that, wouldn't it? Alter the catch-up speed. Yeah, so it's all got parameters that you can change as well, which, I mean, how much more difficult would that be with keyframing? So this here is moving in a zone. So you've got this blue zone, so the, the character's just kind of idling and walking around. So this is how people tend to, to be on the phone. I tend to pace when I'm arguing with the misses on the phone. So maybe that's what's going on with this guy. It switched it for most idle. So it just get, gets a zone. That's amazing. Now we're moving on to another section of the video, I think. Motion-based innovations. So this is using a gizmo to change the, the angle. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So now we can auto-blend clips. So you can see on the timeline, yeah, they're blending clips into one another. And that's the result. Oh, and there's a comparison. So you can see the top one is with the blend and the bottom one is without. And the bottom one, you can see it, it like kind of snaps between animations. The top one blends them really well. That's a very cool feature. So you can get animations that aren't necessarily part of the same sequence and make a sequence out of them, which is very cool. 
animation layers in any animation suite, animation layers are incredibly powerful. You can see they've got their base movement and then they're adjusting it so that they can blend it in with something else or change the, the kind of feel and mood of it, which is pretty special again. Here they're changing the emotion, now it's a sad wave. Nice, easily managed deriv derivative motion. So there they were creating extra, extra jumps. Yeah, again, pretty cool. Interactive motion. Right, so there he's trying to open the door. His hand, his hand missed. So it looks like they're retargeting that. So now, perfect, spot on. And same here, so one click reach target. So they're just fixing how that should happen. Yeah, and he closes the door really well. That hand's clipping into the leg. So they're going to reset that. Yeah, and that just stops it from doing that. And it also stayed put. So it was on the leg and went with that. I think that's what we're going to see again. So yeah, the, the hand wasn't on the hip, so it's being put back on the hip and on the shoulders. And now, if you watch that, but you can see that his hands are going, going with her hips, which is very cool. Again, that's just one click that they fixed that with. Uh, I think they're going to do the same with the, the arms that's carrying her here. And you can see... Oh, that's pretty cool. So if we just watch that again. So watch her leg as she kicks. His hand goes with it, so it looks like he's taking the weight, which is brilliant. That's really good. What we've got here, view port control rig. Right, so we've got this here, which looks like the uh, My Human IK control, which would be familiar to those that have used it. So you're kind of setting it up how you want this to be. You can then select your different joints here and get the movement in place. So you can probably do pretty solid um, keyframe animation with that as well. Here they're using inverse kinematics to keep the feet planted and so that when he jumps and lands, the floor looks solid. He's not going to go below it. He's not going to hover above it. Yeah, so the same thing here. So yeah, we're still doing the end effect to editing. The hand was going below the table. Let's just see that again. So the hand was going below the table or into the table. So what they're doing now is sorting out those effectors so that it's solid, so that then the weight stays on the table, which obviously you'd expect from a table. Your hands don't go through a table. More controls on these feet. Yeah, pinning the effectors. So what are we what are we pinning here? The feet. Oh, and probably the hands as well, maybe. So you can see nothing's pinned there. They're gonna pin the hands. Yeah, so now the hands have been pinned. So you know if you kind of if that's someone like hanging out the back of a plane and holding on for dear life, like kind of the, the uncharted um games do a lot of that sort of stuff, don't they? And yeah, even like pinning everything, it kind of, without even doing anything, it looks like that box is really heavy. Very, very cool. Okay, motion correction. Ah, foot sliding. So, if you've animated before, especially if you've done like um, stationary walk cycles, you'll, then, you'll know that getting them in place and then moving them results in a lot of sliding often. But that, so let's, yeah, so that's now, so they're just putting these footsteps in and it sticks. So now the foot won't, won't slip. And then they can reposition the footsteps. That's pretty cool. And the orientation. Elevation as well. So you could have them like stepping over rocks and things. Or like going down into a ditch. Yeah, and then that uh, changes the leg bend. That's pretty cool. Adjustable foot lock and release timing. What does that do? Oh, so that's kind of how, how far or how long it stays on the ground. Ah, oh, they can do it with the hands as well, can they? Advanced hamping route. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, if you want to do something like this, so he's like holding on for dear life. And uh, I really like the way that they've got the the left hand, his left hand kind of, it does two grabs before the, the right one comes in again. Oh, and they're changing the height. Why would you do... Oh, for a rock. He's like pulling him... Again, that's ace. That is brilliant, isn't it? Okay, enhance real-time visuals. Ah, uh, so this would be like the rendering side of it. So once you've animated, you want your work to look cool. So we've got lens flare. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, that's definitely lens flare. <laughs> okay, volumetric light. Oh, the, I wonder where it was then. The light shafts, of course. Uh, same here. Oh, yeah, so that's making it look really kind of hazy, nighttime. Very good for neon. Okay, reflectivity. 
yeah, that's spot on, isn't it? It's the sort of thing that you can take for granted now, but it's not always easily done. Oh, look at that, shiny. So I don't think that's showing as ray tracing, but it looks very nice. We've got some motion blur. So the one on the right is the motion blur here. Yeah, that makes a big difference. If you've got your high action shots, you're going to need that connecting to Omniverse. Oh, so it supports NVIDIA Omniverse as well. That's cool. Omniverse is not something I've had a proper play with yet. But I know they're really pushing it, so the integration is good. And it looks like that supports ray tracing, although it appears they're calling it path tracing. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. Look at the eye shaders there. Yeah, so they're showing off that this, you know, if you want to do really high end stuff, this is this is ready for that. And I know that this originally, um, this originally was created back in the days of Machinima, so that people could do um, animation really quickly like they did things like red versus blue and uh, you can see that the roots are all still there it's about creating animation really quickly and making it accessible and um, they've got a lot of integration as well so i'd be more interested in the unreal engine integration but unity for people that use that uh, blender and omniverse which is something i need to look at to be fair i think iclone does also include the, some options to do facial animation with the iphone so we've got motion director motion based innovations Enhanced real-time visuals, and it's coming soon. Okay, so that's that. I think that looks amazing. So I wanted to share it because, again, if you're wanting to create animated projects or get animation into your game, and you know how difficult animation is, this could be a game changer for you, which is why I thought it was worth sharing. So with that being said, let's do a giveaway. So if you'd like a copy of the current version of iClone, which is seven, then what you need to do is leave a comment telling me why you think iClone 8 looks good or not, if that's if that's your thought. I think it looks good. Um, you need to make sure you like the video and you need to make sure you subscribe to Game Dev Academy so that uh, you can be notified. In a week's time, I'll pick a, uh, a comment at random. I'll find a random generator to do that and I'll announce who has won. And then I'll uh, get your details and send you a license, which will be pretty cool, I think. Reillusion, the company that make this, are also releasing uh, another piece of software which is called Character Creator 4. I'm going to create another video for that one where I'm just doing the same thing, looking at software, because I think, again, that's really exciting. I'll link that below, and I'll also put a link on screen somewhere, so uh, look out for that. And uh, I think that's it for this video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.